Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right. So uh, this episode is the seventh episode of a nine part series of Uruguayan wine reviews. These are all free samples. So I have total autonomy in these reviews. I think I've said this now seven times. Anyway, be sure to watch the first episode of the series for a more in-depth feature on Uruguayan wine. The short version is that wine has certainly been made in Uruguay since the early 1600s. However, it's not until 1870 that the modern wine industry really begins in Uruguay. Today's wine comes from Bodega Garzon. If you know anything about Uruguayan wine, then you know Garzon. They are arguably the best known winery in Uruguay and the entry level to, and their entry level to that is their best known wine. And I've had it several times over the years. I can also say I had their entry level Albariño and that is fantastic. So today's wine is a treat for me as I'm already a fan of the winery. All right, well, let's get some background, shall we? And nothing. Like, I had to do some, like, real digging just to find out that they started in 2009. All right, maybe it's a bit of an exaggeration, but the origin story is really lacking in my opinion. Anyway, the founder is Argentine billionaire Alejandro Bulgarone, along with his wife, Bettina. And he spared no expense in building this winery and vineyard. The winery is near the town of Garzon in the Maldonado department. They have 250 hectares of vineyards and a huge winery that's over 19,000 square meters or over 205,000 square feet. In total, they grow more than 20 varieties, including the aforementioned Tanat and Albariño. The property also includes a world-class restaurant, and they claim to be the first fully sustainable winery in Uruguay, including being LEED or L-E-E-D certified, not, but not just the first in Uruguay, the first outside of North America. The vineyard is on top of soils that are over 2.5 billion, with a B, 2.5 billion years old. Part of what's called the crystalline basement. These are considered rocks that lay above the mantle and beneath all other rocks and sediments. Occasionally, as in this case, they are exposed at the surface. These rocks get broken down over millions of years and weathering to become basalt. Now they call it ballast on their website, but I can't find a soil called ballast. If you do look it up, you know what you get? You get the crumb, you get all the, like the broken up rocks that they put along uh, uh, railroad tracks. So I'm pretty sure they mean basalt because that's what happens when basement soil gets weathered down. The vineyard is divided into over 1,000 plots. They have cataloged each plot's microclimate, orientation, humidity, sun exposure, soil characteristics, and biodiversity. You know what? Sounds like a bit like burgundy to me. If you know the history of burgundy. All right. They hand harvest the entire vineyard. They also hand select the bunches to ensure quality. They say they do minimal intervention during the winemaking process. They built a gravity winery with sustainable energy sources of wind and solar. They use three different types of fermentation vessels, stainless steel tanks, concrete tanks, and cone-shaped oak vats. Alberto Antonini is their wine consultant. He's what we call a flying winemaker. He consults with other wineries around the world. However, he is based at the famous winery Antonorian in Italy. They've won numerous awards, including being the first Uruguay winery on Wine Spectator's Top 100 list and winning the New World Winery of the Year for 2018 from Wine Enthusiast. Okay, let's see the stats for this wine. The 2020 Bodega Garzon Single Vineyard Tanat suggested retail price $29. It's from Maldonado. 100% Tanat hand harvested, fermentation in 80 hectoliter cement tanks. Aging is 12 to 18 months in 25 and 50 hectoliter untoasted French oak casks. ABV is 14.5%, the pH is 3.68, the total acidity is 5.5 grams per liter, and the RS is 2.8 grams per liter. All right, let's get into the wine. So I am super excited because I've had, you know, the Tanat, the regular Tanat from these guys. I mean, it's not tons of times, but 
if I've had anything, it's the most, it's the one I've had the most of from Uruguay. So I'm excited to do a single vineyard version. And I'm excited. I was excited to learn a little bit more about them, even though really the, the website doesn't go too much into the history. I mean, they focus more on what they do at the winery and talk about their, their vineyard and their soils um, rather than worrying about like origin story, which I mean, at the end of the day, what's important is what you're doing, not necessarily where you came from within reason, right? But we always love a good story. All right. So yeah, it's like opaque. I can't see through this at all. It's like not quite black wine, but it's, it's definitely a dark, dark, uh, ruby color. Um, definitely I would call it medium plus pretty close to medium plus staining on the glass. Let's look at some tears real quick. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, in that 14% range is, you know, medium plus to high, honestly. All right, let's check it out. So I would call it really like medium plus aromatics. It's definitely a youthful uh, smelling wine, almost hit tasting. Um, it really hits you with fruit first. It is a fruit forward wine on the aroma, uh, red and black fruit. I've got blackberry, raspberry, a little bit of strawberry, but more blackberry and raspberry, black raspberry type of thing going on. I also have like a cacophony of flowers. It's a potpourri, if you will, but a more of a fresh. I know potpourri is a dried or dried flowers, but I feel like it's almost like I'm, I'm smelling a bouquet of flowers rather than potpourri. I've also got like this spice component, spice shop type of thing going on. I usually refer to this as world market or pier one um, for you o OGs of, of uh, places like that. So yeah, it's also a little bit of dust. It's almost like you walked into an antique shop a little bit. So you get all that great wood characteristics. Not necessarily furniture polish, because this is like unpolished wood. So I mean, the aromatics are great. Um, I got a lot of stuff on there, a little bit of earth. Um, these, are un these are untoasted oak, like big oak tanks. So they're, they're going to impart something, but it's not like, it, I, I feel like these are not new oak. All right. You're not, you're not buying 50 hectoliter and 25 hectoliter, uh, oak tanks every year. So these probably have been used for quite a while. So it's really just more fermentation and storage vessel, um, rather than necessarily to impart oak characteristics or oak flavors and, and aromas. Yeah. Let's just taste it. There's definitely a richness to this wine. There's a definitely a, kind of over the top on the fruit. There's a compote thing going on here. Um, kind of jammy with the blackberry, raspberry, black raspberry, a little bit of plum, a touch of strawberry jam thrown in there for good measure. Um, that fresh bouquet of flowers is there though that now they're a little more dried out so it might be in the process of becoming potpourri um i feel like lavender is kind of the overriding thing it's almost like that lavender soap um type of aroma not that it's soap aroma but you know how lavender soap has that smell so a floral type um soap or or uh, air freshener that type of thing Combine that with like you just walked into a spice shop, uh, walk into an antique store. It still has all of that. As far as like any oak influenced spices, not really. I don't necessarily get great amounts of vanilla or clove or cinnamon. I mean, it's more just a wood type of quality that I'm getting um, that you're, you're just getting the quality of the of barrels or just wood in general, but not like your typical oak, French or American oak characteristics. Um, it's juicy, tannin, definitely high. Um, it's hanging out. It's, it's, it's not out of balance, but it's also, you can't ignore it. Uh, the alcohol is pretty well integrated and this was what, 14.5? Yeah, um, it's pretty well integrated as far as alcohol is concerned. Um, 
it's not it's not really a there's not really a big burn going on it's balanced i think the wine is excellent made it's what 29 bucks again yeah 29 dollars i think it's worth every every bit of that 29 dollars i feel like you know they definitely put a lot of effort into this wine that they were trying to choose maybe the best fruit for it you, you know you, you would think right I think it's really, really, really well-made wine. Absolutely. And it's, to me, unmistakably New World. New World with really neutral oak. I think, it's, I think it's really, yeah, I think it's really good. For sure, if you can find this, I would get it. All right, so that's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and then tell your friends, and we'll see you next time.